Right then, so we have the input shaft and the output shaft. I've done the other video talking about this and the other. This is easy to fish out, you just basically lift the fucker up and booyah, there we go. So you'll see on this end there is a bushing that sits in there and then there's a fucking chunky, look at the bloody size of that massive roller bearing in the back of there. This one's a big bearing here. Now when we do uh, gearboxes you don't have to, well with this particular type of gearbox, and most of them, nearly all of them, all of them that I know of, you don't have to do any of the plastic age rubbish or anything. If there's a bearing that's sloppy, you'll kind of tell, it'll have rock. So if you can rock it, as in that way, if you can rock it that way, that means that there's enough clearance between the balls and the races, and it's all shite. We have this, really, see that's what I'm talking about, imagine you had a bearing that could do that. Now weirdly enough, it hasn't started to touch the casings. Can I actually? No, I can't. Even when I rock it, I can't touch the casings. But you can see there's that rock there. Ah, fucking rain. Right, so yeah, we have this rocking in here. And as long as it can't touch the casings, no, it's just rubbing against the other gear. We'll probably see some witness marks on the inside here. This means that this bushing that's in there, I think it's a bushing for this one. We'll find out in a second. That means she's fucking toast. The gear itself might be as well. It might sound okay. You can hit rubbing. And we, you could see in the demonstration video I did before, you could see it just walking around. That's not good. If you look at some of the other gears, there's a bit of play in there, but not like that. You know, that's we can hear that. You know what I mean? That's an awful lot. So you just lift this out, and you see there's that groove in there for that thrust ring. Just pull it out like that, and then we can see our selector forks, and this is actually a beautiful example of how this whole mechanism works. So you can see that this dog on the end of here sits in there, and as we rotate the whole thing, so she ain't got anything to really hold that. Give me a shaft. Well, oh, everything's on the bloody table, so everything's going to wobble. Um, Torque wrench, that'll do, that's nice and smooth. <laughs> so if we put that there, that'll kind of hold that selector where she should live. These other two should be a bit more this way, a bit more there, not nodding its head for fuck's sake. Gah, play the game, you stupid machine! <laughs> And then when you select, when you rotate your selector drum. Come on, the fucking torque wrench is in the bloody way now. When you rotate your selector drum, you can see that these dogs follow these channels. Let me master zoom you. Master zoom! So you can see as we rotate this drum, you can see that these dogs, uh, these selector forks move. See, like that. Like that. Like that. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> Not the best demo ever. And it's just basically these dogs that are on the end of these selector forks that basically just ride around in these grooves. And it's just how this rotates, and that is locked by that datum, that cam roller that just sits in there. So basically, it's just these tracks that denote what these do. There's this massive rod. But this massive rod, this does not move like this. This literally moves from there to there like this. This is all this does. See there's some wear on the end of our fingers. Yeah, pretty much about right. They're not snapped or bent. Another good way if you've got it like this is to test if your selector for uh, selector rod, this guard rod, you can see a bit of a wear on it. If you just try and run this along it, if it's really nice and smooth, it should be a not really any rock in it, but you should be able to go right up and down it like so. And it's not jamming up or anything shit like that. It's a bit hard to do with this because we run out of room because we're basically catching on the inside of the case. But that's our basically our selector fork arrangement. Quite a nice one, quite an easy one to set up because basically what you do is you put your selector drum in, then you basically just feed these in. Let's do that actually. Right, you've got room to move out this way. Why haven't you got room to move out that way? Why are we stuck? Where are we stuck? 
Oh, all right, there's that slice, yeah. So if I turn this this way, these selector forks are guide rods. Let me zoom you out, master of zoom. Um, there's this retaining bar, and basically these have a cutout in the side of them. See if I can do this in camera, all of it in camera. Yep, ignore it. I'm just worried I'm going to drop this. So if we undo these, oh, I was resting on the gear. There we go. There we go. These guard rods that will then have the ability to fall out. I think I might get hung up on the. Um, Select a drum, maybe, possibly, probably not. Who knows? We'll find out in a minute. These should have locked tight on. Let's just use that to balance it. <laughs> or something. There we go. It's probably precariously positioned. Yeah, I thought so. I'm trying to just, like I say, a lot of the time doing this for the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the camera's in a weird position, it's not where I usually have it. So I c from right where I'm stood right now, I cannot see the screen, so I cannot see what you see. Unfortunately. These retaining screw stuff like this, these usually have Loctite on. Because if they come out due to vibration and stuff like that, then it will be an absolute fucking mess for your gearbox. One of these selector forks just walking out will clap something there we go I'm trying to remove this without having the whole thing fall apart so we can push the rods out properly and show you how they're inserted so if we move the output shaft like so back to this view there we go if I push this rod out you can see there's that little slice that little retainer, wherever the fuck it's gone. There she is. That little retainer, basically, you can see the witness marks. There's one there and there's one there that just basically sits in there like that and just stops it from backing in and out. But the reverse of this is when you put this back together is you'd find your selector groove. I do like this design. And you basically just push that in, push that in, put a bit of tape on it or something, slap it on the other side, put that retainer in and away you go. So they come out like so. We're going to measure the straightness of this. You can see the skid marks, look. So someone's been doing a bit of clutchless jobby. Because <laughs> that's all of a sudden jerking. And then we push this one out. And that one should just roll completely out. And there's a little skid mark there. Nothing major. And that's quite common because usually... Um, the gear ratio, so the gear drop between the bigger gears and the smaller gears. So if you look at this for your output shaft, you can see that there is quite a big, there's a bigger step usually between the first and second and third gears than there are fourth, fifth and sixth. The difference between uh, fifth and sixth is fuck all, a couple of teeth. You know what I mean? Where this is not from here to here, but here to here. It's usually a bigger drop. Um... But anyway, let's take these rods out. It's a bit of side thrusting marks on the side, right on the tips. Yeah, but they look pretty good. What are these like on the rod? This is the... See, they move freely across the rod. No real catch up, no resistance, which means these are probably straight. We're going to measure them. And then you just have your selector drum in the bottom with its detent jobby. And as you rotate this drum, you can see that it just snaps into position, snaps in, snaps in, snaps in. You can see what I'm doing with my hand, that's why we have to have that ratchet mechanism, because basically it's not just a continuous turn, you know, it's like a stepper motor, it's just from one state to another. Right, as soon as we've done that, we can kind of get rid of this casing and let's have a look at the gears. Right, all the shit on here. Right then, I can't fucking see the camera. So, input shaft. 
let's see what we can see so these have slightly back cut gears if you can see that that's the zoom so if I show you there you can see that these have slightly back cut gears the difference with this is that these have been designed and forged like this when you when you know when these guys oh yeah I'll back cut your gears for you when they machine it they're machining into the, the hardened case hardened region of the gear which basically exposes the soft plastic edges soft plastic edges the soft and uh, you know that causes them to mush and curl over even quicker so you can see there that's where the engagement is this is the moving gear you can see it's on the splines you can see the splines these are freewheeling gears and it's that when you click into gear this isn't the first is over here but when you click into gear sometimes it just doesn't find it like that and then when it actually does slip it goes bang bang like that and that's what basically gives you that jerk when you select into gear from just say neutral to first sometimes what happens is everything's spinning and it just goes like that and it just picks it up or it picks it up right there when it picks it right there it just basically lands into it and all is good and starts turning it it's when it's got this full stroke of bang like that it's just bang straight in even when it is close like this there is the chance of it happening for the simple fact is that um the force is still the same because it you know it's, it's like doing that from the reference point of this gear stuff like that so it basically just sits in there like so and you know off she turns with the whole thing just like that i should hold the bearing really off she turns with the whole thing let's actually have a look at these they don't look that bad there's a mush on that one fecking nora so on this one here, if I can get you right there, right there, if you can see that, she's nicely mullered and curled over on that corner, right on the tip here. Uh, actually, they all are. Becky Nora. But that's kind of just damaged. So gearboxes generally, you know, they are constant mesh gearboxes. One of the reasons why they're not used on cars, apart from rallying and stuff like that, is because these are, in a sense, destructive gearboxes. So it's that you see, it's when you do that, that it just pushes. And this is the problem, is that your selector fork is being pushed this way. There's nothing to stop it, you know what I mean? It's just been pushed that way on that guide rod by the um, selector drum. And if it just nuts it, you can see it pushes it back. So if I get it there and let go of it, try and let go of it and balance it, and just nut it, it pushes it see how it pushes that back without me holding it it just pushes it back it's that glancing blow and the worst thing is as, 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 as soon as these end edges become rolled over and chamfered there's nothing stop it it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse um, on these ones they're in particular they're in all right good neat you can start to see it starting to roll over there um, but you know this has done nearly a hundred thousand miles this is really good um, you know, this is kind of the expected state of affairs. So, have a look at the output shaft. We should be able to get the first gear just clean off. So, there's our bearing. What's that like on the shaft? Oh, nothing really there. I was going to say, isn't there a thrust washer? Right. So, there's a thrust washer in there. Oh, fucking hell, that's it. Broken, knackered, take it back. Right, so, we can see. If you can see, there we go. We've got a lot of wear on there. When you start to see these rings, it means that they're protruding up and it's rubbing on there. That's quite a lot of meat that's been taken out of that. I wonder what the size, I can feel the burrs on the edge. So on the edge of this lip, I can feel there's a burr and a burr there. Burrs are material that have been shifted and moved. You can see where the inside of these dogs so these dogs here no you can't see fuck all there the inside the face of these dogs here you can see how they're all really polished or not really polished but you can see how they're brighter than the rest of this like dull gray look that's because they've been skating across here across this face there we go across this face here you can see that it's starting to curl over these edges on the inside slightly which is quite common for first gear 
you know, because you're basically going from standstill to a Lord of Lord. But yeah, that it's a shame you can't buy these. I don't think you, you, you can buy oil like bushings, but I don't think you can buy these from Kawasaki. Pop that out and pop a new one in. Um, you can always machine one and put one in. Right, that's worrying. What's locking that? It isn't that bearing thing, is it? Oh, it might be. The Kawasaki bloody... Remember how I did this before, I had to spin it. Let me master zoom you back out. Master zoom! Thing is, it's on the spline shaft. <laughs> Has this got the balls in it? So Kawasaki have a positive engagement. Yeah, I can see the bloody channels in there. There we go. Right, there's one ball. There's one ball bearing. There's another one sat in there. There's another one sat in there. These are usually dropped in from the... Oh, there we go. There's another one. So these three little balls are used in this positive engagement jobby. And they sit in these slots. So you can see there's the slots there. They basically sit in there. And they basically hang up on the gear. This means that you cannot... The camera's there for it. So you, can, you can't accidentally... You can only go into first, that's it. You can only go into first, you can't go into second from neutral. So it just stops you stalling the shit out of doing something fucking horrible. When we take those balls out, and put this shaft on, put this shaft on, he says. There's no chamfers on, the, well there's a tiny chamfer on the end of that shaft, usually they're a bit bigger than that. Um, yeah, you load these balls from the outside. But regardless, that's that. What's this actually look like? Eh, pretty good. Got a bit of hammering on these edges. You can always tell which is the driving edge usually, unless everyone spends the time doing awesomely smooth into gear, but does horrible downshifts and does horrible fucking, yeah, just downshifts and engine braking kind of stuff and changing gear while you do it. Um, you see the little recesses for the balls. Big fucking gear, actually. And then these are all circlipped on. And I'm not going to bother removing them. Double row bearing here. Uh, that space of collar on there. Everything else that feels pretty good and looks pretty good. It's just that first gear. You can see there's some wear on the shaft. Let me get something to wipe my bloody hands down with. Let's have a look at the actual shaft. So the shaft has got a bit of wear on it, you'd expect that. You can see we've got a polished region. This is all work hardened because of the bearing, because that cupped bearing sits on there like so. This section on the other hand has some of the wear marks from there. So it sits on... Hmm. Yeah, you can see she's... We shouldn't be able to do that. Should be a bit more like that, but even at the end of the shaft, you can tell that this is, yeah, she's done. Oh, uh, walky walky. <laughs> There's a fucking shitload of slop in there. It's a shame we can't plastic gauge that because you can't clamp that on. But if I had to guess, just by loading the bearing one then, have a look down at the hole, See, I can tip this well out of plane. If I try and show you that, I can tip this well out of plane. Now we haven't got that thrust washer sat there and the bearing encapsulating it. That's yeah, that's quite bad, isn't it? It's quite a lot, of, quite a lot of slop. You could kind of sit this against something, put a test indicator here, and push it from the extremes backwards and forwards. There's no real need. I'm not going to replace this. She's done, is this engine. We are going to put it back together, hopefully, with another look. Um, 
try it running that would be the beauty of it that's an awful lot of slop in there it's weird I've never actually seen many of these actually die like this hmm just general wear and tear oh I can actually see that burr on this shaft so if I master of zoom you again master of zoom on this shaft there is a relief cut in there um, this is so they can cylindrically grind this without having to raise any burrs and even if they do they can basically brush them off on the inside of this gear here it hasn't worn and I can get a picture of that because that's a beautiful and actually that light there is perfect let me get a picture of that you'll be able to see what I mean there's a ring where the um, oil like bushing on the inside hasn't worn and you'll see what I mean, you'll be like, fuck you now, there we go. Get a few pictures just in case it doesn't come out very well. There we go. Um, you can see that she's, there's a massive step there. You see, I could actually measure that step. I'm going to do that, I'm going to measure, I want to see how much that's worn. Any road, let's put this back together. Let's put the balls back in. Get my little iron key out. Get my tub of grease out. Let's master of zoom you back out again. There we go. So I put the balls in there to keep them, but they should go in here. And it's the ones with the recesses. So them ones. Bit of grease in there. Put the grease in here for safekeeping. Um, that one. So inside this gear, on a spline, there is a. It's so hard to show you, so I'm not even going to bother. Well, actually, I can show you the hole. The hole is wider and then goes smaller where it's drilled through. So where's the last one? That's the last one. So you can see there, there's like a little recess in there. And that's where your ball goes and you'll see, you'll notice that it's directly on a spline so now we've put all them back in there we're putting the gear back on the right way and we want to go spline to spline so well it's that little hole in it on the outside there's a little hole so line up that little hole with the little recesses in the uh, shaft Come on, you little fucker. God, they didn't put any chamfer on this shaft. It's such a dicker. There we go. Right, that's the daddy. So now, well, it's not going to work now because I put loads of bloody grease in it. Um, thrust washer. Put that back on. Put our gear back on. Put our bearing back on. And that's the thing complete. If we look at the other shaft, oh, we've already been through this, haven't we? Fucking hell. Yeah, the rest of it doesn't seem to have any problem whatsoever. Any problem whatsoever. Even this first gear in buried in here. She's a bit sharp. So you roll your finger across the crowns of the threads, you can feel they're a bit sharp. That's just wear. As these things wear, they sharpen themselves. <laughs> the bearing, fucking spot on. Can't feel any rock in that or anything. You see the induction hardening on the end of the shaft, you can see the colour change, I hope that comes out on the, the camera, just to basically harden up the thread because they know that you're going to be all over it. That could actually be, now I say that, a lot of shafts do have that from you, but that actually could be the fact that the clutch has got too hot at some point. But usually, yeah, the, the thread section, they do harden them up a bit because they know you're going to be impact gunning shit on and all the rest of it. So that's the gearbox. There's nothing we're going to replace in it. Um, you know, if you like, I say this is my first engine rebuild. So the series, not my first engine rebuild. Um, when you do something like this, is if you find a gear like that, that's all fucking horrible. If this was, you know, a bike that I was going to use or an engine I was going to use for something great, you know what I mean? Then 
you know, that gear would have to be replaced. And that's all it's about. It's about finding gears that got broken tooth or broken dogs or anything like that, cracks in them, stuff like that. And then you, you know, you just, it's all about replacement really. There's nothing really you can do about gearboxes other than really just replacement. That's all you can really do. Um, you know, but these gearboxes are fantastic. They do last a long time. You know, the weak points in these are these forged dogs, these selector fork rods um, being bent, stuff like that. And generally that's because of people shifting like complete cunts all over the place. Um, clutchless shifting does exacerbate the, the situation because if those gears hit each other when you're on full chat and this is trying to push that gear over and it feels resistance, you are basically doing this. And the weirdest thing is, is like I was saying about these shafts, um, where you can see the wear, you can see the wear there. This is where this shaft, this is where this dog runs. It just runs here. So if it gets batted, 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 this is why these things bend because this whole thing will tip. It will tip across the top there and pivot around at the bottom, and that digs into the shaft. And you kind of see there where it's been digging in. I can, I can't really feel that. You can definitely see that skid mark section. Master of Zoom, where are we? We're there. You can see that skid mark section there where it's been digging in. I can't really see anything on the selector fork. Um, there might, oh, there is some evidence, a bit of evidence there of it. But you can see that there's a, these dig marks, and right there on the other side. This is where she's tipping. Look, it's the width of it. It's, that's the range it moves, and that's it digging in. It's basically, I'm trying to rotate it, so I'm pushing my fingers that way, that way, and pivoting it, and it digs in, and it goes like that, and it rubs on it. And that's what causes these step marks you can see there, like that. You know what I mean? The rest of the shaft, not it doesn't ride across the rest of the shaft. This is it. And you can see that this is in one particular spot. It's because this shaft is stopped from rotating by this cutout. There you can't see that by that cutout. So this shaft doesn't rotate and this just does this. Um, actually it's the other way, sorry. Just does that. And it's basically just doing this all the time. And this can eventually cause these shafts to just bend. You know what I mean? And when they bend, oh, you've got all sorts of fucking issues. This is why they make quick shifters to try and cut the power to the transmission instead of just being under full load. And blipping the throttle and stuff. You know, there's guys who say, oh, you blip the throttle and the rev the power drops off. You've blipped it from where? 10,000 to 8,000 on 7,000. The engine is still firing. You know what I mean? There is still power being transmitted. Just because it's smooth and it feels like nothing's happening doesn't mean that nothing is happening. Now, when I say does clutchless shifting damage your gearbox, yes, but the whole gearbox, in a sense, damages itself. This is just increasing that damage. And, you know... Most of these guys who do it are doing it on the road, and you're not racing. You're not, you know, you're trying to get to the next traffic lights that ten, a hundredth of a second quicker. It's just not fucking worth it. Not only that is, if any of these shafts are slightly weak or the design wasn't absolutely brilliant, they're just trying to reduce weight and stuff. It doesn't mean that if you clutch the shift the first time you do it, your bike explodes. It means that the wear on these things is just exacerbated. You know what I mean? and you know and it does it increases the damage on these parts some people say oh, i pulled my gearbox part all the teeth look fine lost it's not the fucking teeth of the gears you know and not only like that is what have you measured this have you, have you, can you quantify this no of course you fucking can't any road um so that, really for this bike for this engine the gearbox is done we're basically just going to put this clean everything out and put this back in because there's no real need to do anything with this like i say this gear in the real world, if this bike, you know, I was putting this bike back together or what have you, the bearings I'd probably replace because I'm in here. And number two is that gear. <laughs> that fucking gear. I am it's resting on that gear and we can still pivot it like that. Fucking Nora. Any road. Oh, that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.